What do you think the danger is on the Russia-Ukraine front, and what would your administration, what steps would your administration take in that direction? Well, I'm someone that believes that America is the leader of the free world. We're the arsenal of democracy. Today's video is a very special interview between Jordan Peterson and Mike Pence about the current situation in America, in addition to escalating tensions in the Middle East and Mike Pence's stance on the Russia-Ukraine war. Let's come to the first problem. It's time for Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of the United States, and I to debate. We have to talk about what he's doing and where we're going. We owe it to our country. We owe it to all Americans. Anytime, anywhere, any place. Do you think that Putin respects Biden as a negotiating partner? And do you think that Putin would respect you as a negotiating partner and maybe why to both of those questions? Well, I, it, it would be hard for me to believe that Putin or any leader around the world, um, I, I think they respect the United States of America, but I, I don't know that they, uh, that they respect the president of the United States today at the, at the level that they should. I, and, and it just comes from a series of steps by this administration um, I mean, to unilaterally reopen Nord Stream 2 to Russia. I mean, it was a, it was a policy of, of appeasement on, to reverse one of the policies we'd, we'd put into effect, made no sense at all, to, to, uh, to attempt to get back into the Iran nuclear deal literally hat in hand begging uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the mullahs in, in Iran to come back to the table uh, and renegotiate uh, until it, it, it finally fell apart was, was just a, absurd. Uh, and, and, uh, and of course, the fact that we had negotiated an agreement in Afghanistan with the Taliban the second issue of concern today is the tense developments in the Middle East, the state of alarm occurring in many regions and the warnings of leading countries about war. Tonight, new fears of a possible major escalation of the war in the Middle East, with President Biden warning Iran may be planning to hit targets inside Israel soon. They're threatening to launch a significant attack on Israel. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Iran eyeing retaliation for strikes last week on a diplomatic building in Syria that killed several Iranian commanders, which it blames on Israel. Iran, a primary backer of both Hamas and Hezbollah. Two U.S. officials tell NBC News any retaliation inside Israel is expected to focus on military and intelligence targets, not civilians, and that the Biden administration is considering options for how to respond. Also tonight, growing tensions over a new Israeli airstrike in Gaza. Israel saying the attack killed three adult sons of a top Hamas leader, who they say were Hamas operatives, including a commander. Hamas says the strike also killed four of his grandchildren. During today's state visit for Japan's prime minister, President Biden demanding Hamas accept the latest ceasefire offer that includes returning the hostages, including Americans held by Hamas. Finally, Mike Pence's views on the Russia-Ukraine war. Let me ask you a couple of questions in a different direction, if you don't mind. Um, I think often at the moment that we're all fiddling while Rome burns because, possibly, because of the situation in Russia and Ukraine. And you know, and one of the things that I found heartening, let's say, about the Trump presidency, where you served as vice president, was that there were four years without a major war, and your administration or that administration also advanced the Abraham Accords, which was a major move in the direction of peace in the Middle East. And now we have this war percolating away uh, madly between Russia and Ukraine, and it's really a proxy war in many ways for the West and Russia. And you know, it doesn't, it doesn't look very good to me. And so if you became president, first of all, what do you think the way forward is on that front? I know the hawks are saying, the hawks on the Republican side in particular, and I think this is also true on the Democrat side, are taking this as an opportunity to demolish Russia's conventional forces and to take them permanently out as a conventional enemy, let's say. Now, the problem I see in that is that when you push someone as powerful as Russia into a corner when they're nuclear armed and their conventional forces are weak, that that loosens the finger on the nuclear trigger. 
And it also doesn't seem to me that given how dependent we are on Russia and Ukraine for food and, and for energy, that weaken, weakening both of those countries on something approximating a permanent basis strikes me as, as reasonable long-term policy. So what do you think the danger is on the Russia-Ukraine front and what would your administration, what steps would your administration take in that direction? Well, I'm someone that believes that America is the leader of the free world. We're the arsenal of democracy. In 1985, Ronald Reagan, in a State of the Union address, articulated what came to be known as the Reagan Doctrine, which essentially said, it'll be the policy of the United States that if you're willing to fight the communists in your country, we'll give you the means to fight them there so we don't have to fight them here. Uh, and it was part and parcel of, of what ultimately brought down uh, the Soviet Union. And, and I, I believe that that wisdom is still true today, uh, that uh, Ukraine is... Uh, not our war, but freedom is our fight. Now, I, I, know there, I know there are people in the presidential contest in my party uh, who have, uh, uh, who, who have uh, spoke admiringly of, uh, of Vladimir Putin's genius. Others have said that it's simply a territorial dispute. It's a, well, I can tell you, I know the difference between a genius and a war criminal. I, um, and uh, I know the difference between a territorial dispute and a Russian invasion. I mean, what's happening in Ukraine today is an unprovoked invasion that is claiming hundreds of thousands of lives. And I believe it's incumbent on the United States of America to continue to lead the West uh, and provide the Ukrainian military what they need to repel the Russian invasion and reclaim their sovereignty. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.